Thank you, Jim. Um, this track is not focused on the uh, the driver or the kernel or anything else like that. This is a uh, this presentation is more geared towards the system admins uh, as part of that uh, orange colored track in the programs called uh, management monitoring and configuration. And uh, my name, as introduced, is James Wright. Your program will show some other names there. Uh, but with no further ado, let me uh, just touch on some of the points that we'll be uh, overviewing here in the next uh, 20, 25 minutes. Um, in general, uh, you'll be learning about the management agents, the administration, the fabric diagnostics and debug features, uh, touching on the GUI that's available. The second half will be touching a little bit more on the command line tools, uh, their capabilities, particularly for monitoring and diagnostics, for configuring and management, and then we'll wrap it up with a couple uh, basic examples uh, of how to verify the hosts in the fabric, how to do performance analysis. Most of the audience here is very familiar with the concept of fabric management, subnet management, performance management. So um, even if you don't already have true scale based InfiniBand systems, the concepts should be very similar. Uh, for those of you that do already have true scale based fabric management, um, this should be exceedingly familiar. Uh, we've just extended that to be able to work on the OmniPath fabric. There's, there's not a lot of magic in that concept. So when you look at what comprises the fabric management stack. Um, yes, there's a, a new fabric manager, uh, and it's specific to managing uh, the, the OPA, as we refer to it, uh, fabric uh, features. Um, it runs on OPA connected management nodes, uh, or in a switch embedded processor. Uh, you can run the fabric manager embedded as well. Um, I'll touch a little bit more on what I mean by management nodes. That's a security feature of, of the architecture. Exactly what you'd expect from a fabric manager. Initializing, configuring, and monitoring that fabric's routing, QoS security, and, and other performance features. Um, and they work in parallel with and in conjunction with these distributed management agents, which run on all of the different nodes, the switches, and, and uh, we call them uh, a host fabric interface, the same concept as an HCA. Uh, there's a set of tools, um, again, uh, steeped in the history of, of what we've been able to do in true scale and extend. So even though uh, there are early serial number systems out in the wild now for OmniPath, uh, it's not that we're talking about tools in the future tense, as in software will, uh, but software does. And, and I'll, I'll be overviewing that a bit here as well. And then uh, for those who, who uh, um, don't have their own visualization tools, uh, there's, there's a GUI available as well. Uh, yesterday during the presentation of the open source, uh, John Fleck, uh, provided this slide um, with emphasis in a couple different areas. Uh, the, the area of emphasis that we're talking about today is up in here. Uh, notice how this is all user space. Uh, we're talking about the, the OmniPath Fabric Manager, the Fast Fabric Tools as they're referred to, and touching on the GUI uh, shortly. Um, the kinds of things that you'd expect from your Fabric Manager are all here. Um, we're leveraging the, the whole OFA uh, stack environment. Um, we support uh, different third-party unified management tools uh, for job scheduling, et cetera, j just like you would expect. Um, and it provides this scalable, centralized fabric uh, framework uh, for, for managing uh, large fabrics uh, on the road towards exascale here. Uh, on the inside, this is kind of the, the components and their, their interaction. Um, probably not a lot of surprise here, but let me just touch on a couple things that might not look familiar. So at the core here, we have a, in the fabric manager, there's a subnet manager as well as a performance manager. And there's corresponding admins um, in the case so that you have SA clients, subnet administration clients uh, that can make queries in band in order to retrieve fabric information. Um, there's also an independent performance manager there and so that through PA uh, clients, you can do the same kind of view of fabric. At the low end, where these interconnected host fabric interfaces and switches are, that's where the management agents run. And so there's a subnet management agent and a, a separate performance management agent, as one would expect, uh, that 
are used by both the the SMA, uh, the SM and the PM in order to comprise their views of the fabric. To and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, on the top left corner there, the fast fabric, this is generally referred to as the tools, the command line tools and other things like that. You can see how they leverage both out of band as well as in band techniques for dealing with what we call uh, internally managed or externally managed uh, chassis. Those are options that are available. And the, the, the fabric manager uh, GUI, it comes in through this, uh, this fabric executive over here um, yeah, with the proper privileges, et cetera, to be able to uh, access the same data. Again, a lot of familiarity here. Uh, what inside the fabric manager is that subnet manager? Um, all the kinds of things you'd expect out of there. Uh, it works with directed route, lid routed, and, and hybrid schemes for uh, addressing packets throughout the fabric during fabric initialization and monitoring. Uh, there are traditional commands that query through the SA to get at those databases. You have a uh, all of our commands start with OPA. So there's an OPA SA query, um, but there's also some more advanced features like OPA report, which I'll be giving examples of later in the presentation. Um, but we do acknowledge there are some differences, right? Uh, when Ira gave his presentation, he alluded to the fact that uh, there have been some scalability improvements just even in the management area, uh, particularly things for larger size MAD packets. Um, I think aggregates were touched on. Uh, where you can combine multiple requests in a, in a same transfer and get the responses back. Uh, I'm not sure if multi-port was mentioned, so I'll, I'll mention that one right now as well, where particularly when you're looking at high radix switches, like 48 port count switches, um, you, you like to be able to ask about, give me such and such information about ports and a range of ports, that, like the operational ports or things like that. And it's much more efficient when you're um, working management datagrams in the factory uh, fabric that way. Uh, a couple other things, uh, topology verification, some advanced traffic features, um, the virtual fabric mechanisms that are used. Those are all managed uh, by the subnet manager and I got a couple slides on those things coming up as well. Speaking of one of them, um, an admin challenge is, is definitely dealing with cable management. The, the cables themselves are frues, they have serial numbers, they have uh, you know part numbers, etc. Um, one of the things that really helps with uh, fabric installs is being able to have in advance uh, your cabling diagrams and your other things like that uh, uh, put in a spreadsheet, for example, and then go ahead and have the fabric manager tell you whether or not what it's looking at matches what's in there. And if not, produce punch lists that can go out to the installers, whoever your installer team is, to go fix this cable here or this is not connected where you thought it was, etc. Once you're past install and you're in operations, um, you don't like people messing with your fabric uh, topology, uh, att attaching devices that aren't supposed to be there, or doing other things like that. So it, there's a constant monitoring in the background for unauthorized changes during the operations that you get alerted to as well. And we have this concept of quarantined links. So just because a, a link might be completely functional and operational, um, if it didn't meet with the security policy and the fact that the, you know, such and such a device wasn't supposed to be there, um, we will isolate and take that link out and, and uh, report appropriately that there was a quarantine event. In addition to those kinds of things, there is a lot of feature, there are a lot of features that are built right into the hardware itself to help with the support here. Um, at every link layer, we have the, this concept of uh, an instantaneous view of link quality, which we pull back in all of our statistics collection as well. Uh, it, it's an aggregate of a, a, a variety of different things, but kind of at a glance, sort of like the, the, the signal bars on your cell phone, it can give you a, a glance of, you know, is everything nice or is there some areas that are uh, still working, but you know, maybe need a little bit more investigation. Oh. We have uh, different indications of the types of ports that are plugged in there, and we have full access to the QSFP-based cable info, so the actual serial number of the cables and the vendor that you're using and other information like that, the length of the cable and all that, is instantly available through these tools and through the archive data as well. Um, and lastly, I was talking about a link down reason. Uh, there's well over a dozen of these from, uh, y you know, the module isn't inserted uh, is the reason why the link's not up uh, to, to something I had talked about before, which was, uh, which was some sort of an unauthorized change, and so it was being isolated for that reason, uh, plus a variety of others. 
One of the other differences was these advanced traffic features. Uh, there's a, a variety of configuration parameters that are associated with these, but they really fall into these three general categories, uh, these traffic flow optimizations, this packet integrity and uh, protection, and the concept of dynamic lane scaling. Um, you can read some of the slides here. Uh, I, from a traffic flow optimization perspective, uh, we have a lot of uh, QoS levels in, in a traditional type network. Uh, if there's two things that need to be sent on a link, uh, the, the virtual lane that has the higher priority uh, will we'll go next, you know, based on whatever kind of fairness it, there is. Um, we do even a little better than that. Uh, because we are at flip based as opposed to packet based on the link, um, we'll, if you've allowed it in the configuration, we'll actually interrupt the transfer of the larger things. Say it was a bulk file transfer uh, that had started with large packets in order for latency sensitive small packets to actually go through and then the larger uh, part of the transfer uh, continues right after that. The packet integrity uh, protection uh, is generally around the concept of uh, end to end, there's a lot of links in some of these very large fabrics. We heard before lunch today about a, a, a Cray system with 40 something thousand nodes in it. Uh, you know, there's a variety of other systems that are around for 2,000, whatever. You end up with a lot of links in your fabric, and going from node to node, there's, there's a lot of things that could happen in between. Well, if you hit errors at individual links, this, this allows the piece of the packet that had the error to actually be retransmitted within the fabric so end to end your applications don't know uh, that there was an issue like that and you can ride through without any uh, application level errors happening. Uh, lastly is the dynamic lane scaling. Uh, these are all 100 gig links, uh, four lanes, 25. Um, if for whatever reason uh, there is some issues with the cable that you had or, or, or whatever, uh, it can downgrade dynamically to using like three lanes or, or two lanes in order to and, and get the thing through again using this packet integrity protection so that the applications, the job that you scheduled to run for the last hour is going to complete and you don't have to restart it again later because it, you know, it failed somewhere along the line. And you can come back later as an admin to, to, to look at these things and, and correct them later. But it will go through with this dynamic lane scaling. Uh, the other area there was like this virtual fabrics. Um, it, it's a QoS concept. It's a partitioning concept. Uh, it, it's quite fre flexible. It, it has a, a number of uh, dimensions to it. Um, the, using P key mechanisms and others, you can define overlapping virtual fabrics. A typical usage would be setting up your different users so that they would have minimal impact on each other. Uh, let, let me just give some examples of, of what I'm talking about there. Um, here's an example, very simple up here, where the management uh, of the fabric, the subnet management agent uh, in band queries, et cetera, are isolated under, under a uh, you know, the management P key example, and all of the others are limited members, right? This is very, very uh, common way of doing things. So we can put our performance manager queries, we can put our subnet management agent uh, uh, queries that are going on in the fabric like that in their own partition and, and work it through, and everything else can share the fabric. Or you can get uh, more generalized, where if you had a group of users that were, you know, call them compute A and another group compute B or whatever, uh, they could be able to work in separate partitions yet share some of the same storage resources, etc. Um, these are these are very you know, simple examples. There's a, a, a lot more uh, complex uh, options that are obviously available. And, and this is runtime configurable, so you can change these configurations and uh, dynamically. Um, so I was just talking about the subnet manager part of the fabric uh, manager as a whole. Uh, there's also this performance manager part in there. It, it's, it has an association with the subnet manager in that it's working off of the same topology uh, that the fabric is. Um, we support in-band methods of uh, statistics collection and with that collection there's a, a variety of things that we can do. Um, it, the kind of things that you'd expect, which would be to gather port counter data, uh, error counts, et cetera. Um, the other things that we've added in, uh, and these are lid routed, by the way, GSI, just like you would have expected. Uh, the kinds of things that we've added in uh, include this uh, short-term history. Uh, there was a mention of that uh, by Sandia's presentation just before lunch. Um, 
all the data that we uh, collect uh, is is available even operationally, and it's also available uh, if there was a field issue and you and you do a capture of the data. It's all available so that you can go back. and And this has happened a couple times where somebody will come to you as an admin saying. My job, which ran three hours ago or, or whatever, it, it didn't work out the way that I thought it was. And you're stuck having to try and do forensics as to what happened back then. So you just go back in time and you, and you whittle it around and you can see where the congestions were or other things like that with the data that's already available to you online. A couple other things. Um, uh, we allow the definition of uh, device groups and other things like that so you can look at subsets of the data. You can add, it's it's. Certainly, there are other more full-featured tools available, but right out of the box, this is the kind of stuff that's available to you to work with the OmniPath uh, fabric that you install. Um, we also sync all the, uh, the database information uh, uh, between fabric managers. Uh, there's primaries and redundance, et cetera, for failover scenarios. So the, the data is not lost should your primary fabric manager uh, disappear. Um, Mentioning the GUI, uh, we have a you know, full-feature Java-based uh, GUI there that kind of at a glance lets you uh, see a variety of things that are going on in there, uh, just, just in terms of sub, subnet summaries, statistics, the overall status, uh, over time what the, what the health trend looks like, um, and also gives you a little summary of the worst nodes. What this is doing is leveraging the existing interfaces that we have into the performance manager, the PA and into the SA, uh, which is very similar to the data that you can extract to work into your own tools as well, uh, or, or you could work with this one as well. Uh, performance counters by group, uh, by overall, uh, etc. And this is all done through the FE interface, so it can be done through remote terminals that had an Ethernet access to wherever your management node was. You, you don't have to be connected to the fabric. So just a quick chime check. Um, that brings us into the command line tools, and then we'll follow by the usage examples. Um, command line tools. Everyone's pretty much familiar with the scope here. There's a, a local scope, a platform scope, when you're talking about like an edge switch or a director class switch. Uh, I guess I should mention we, we have single switches with over 700 ports on them, if you, you know, to, to count the number of pizza boxes that you'd need to put together a large fabric would, uh, you know, could could end up with a pretty big number. So our our standard pizza box, if you want to call it that, that's 48 ports available to you. Um, uh, and then the the director class switches obviously go much higher. Um, and then fabric level, which lets you look at the FM databases, of course, filtered by uh, by your query and by your your privileges. Um, so let, let's look at some of the command line tools. Uh, as was described in the way in which the source was distributed, uh, we offer both a basic and an IFS package. Um, the difference is uh, basically the IF package has a couple extra tools in it, like the, the top tools and some others that are privileged to be able to run uh, directly with the management nodes themselves, uh, whereas all the others, uh, the basic tools are also included in the IFS package. Um, there's, there's full descriptions of this on the website, uh, but that was just a quick summary. Uh, one thing that we did add was pretty extensive man pages, if you were true scale, user from before the you might have uh, missed out on the man pages they're all there now um, there's also offline there's install guides user guides command references uh, etc I'll have a reference at the end of the presentation for that for those who are uh, used to true scale I was alluding to the fact that uh, the IBA underscores pretty much been replaced by an OPA has the same kind of effect and uh, there's either uh, pretty much a direct corollary or, uh, or a similarity of, of commands. Sometimes they're a little bit more rich uh, from some of the things that you would be used to in IB. So it, it shouldn't take that long if you are only familiar with, uh, with the existing IB tool set to become familiar with these. Um, I had mentioned that there's a, an exen extensive set of commands available. Uh, they consist of both executables as well as uh, pre-coded scripts that use one or more executables together in order to extract the information that might be of interest. And so they, this is uh, taken right out of the command line reference guide. Uh, so I am literally not going to walk through every one of these with you, but I'll just touch on the different categories here. Uh, there's some very high level things that you can look at that are both in a 
contextual user interface, so they work nice on command consoles, if that's all that you had available at the time, as well as the GUI I was alluding to, um, but also a, a lot of command line tools, uh, including um, OpaTop, uh, which I will be showing an example of uh, uh, shortly. In the mid-tier, we have uh, OPA report, uh, so you can look at things like the routes through the fabric and, and other things that you're used to using when diagnosing what's going on in an operational fabric. Um, also, through the capture mechanism, almost all of these tools work with the captured data as well. So you can, you can do your forensics and other things like that offline without having to have access to the operational system. Uh, at the lower level and down in the deep level, now we're down at the port level things. So you can, all of the management agents, they're, they're mad packet based. Um, so basically these are uh, primarily executables that'll just run and uh, generate the mad packet for the local interface or for whatever lid that you asked for and get the answer back and present it to you in a, in a user friendly way. So you, you can use these tools or you can you know, work with your own, that's, that, that's up to you. Um, continuing through that category, we have uh, multi-switch things uh, for externally managed and for internally managed switches uh, in a multi-host environment. It's convenient sometimes to, like, uh, you know, find me all the good links or, or find me, you know, all the bad links or other things like that to try and drill down into particular uh, problems um, during an installation. Uh, we have an, uh, like an OPA config. Uh, I'll be showing that real uh, briefly as, as part of the TUI uh, type things that we're doing. Um, many details at the link level. Uh, Fabric Manager itself has a, has a lot of interfaces that can be used to uh, change the configuration uh, or to check new configurations to see if they're valid before you try and apply them to the running system. Uh, things like that that come with the Fabric Management tools. Um, a lot of work went into uh, things to be able to verify uh, particular uh, topologies and what you're looking at. Um, not everybody builds uh, the same kind of uh, fabric to topologies for uh, various reasons, and uh, these, these tools help you look into it. Let me just jump through a couple more. Um, there's XML. We even have Wireshark in interfaces for packet capture. That could be a whole presentation unto itself right there. Uh, I mentioned briefly the uh, ease of use with if you were uh, TUI inclined. Uh, you can see the versions of the software installed. Um, you can generate the supporting information for problem report, or you can uh, get into the fast fabric uh, TUI, which is what's shown here on the left, which helps you set up the chassis, uh, the switches, the hosts. And then in the verification here and the fabric monitoring are the two things that let you, uh, you know, dig further into the operation operating system. And the punchline at the bottom, of course, is um, uh, there's direct command line options available for all these, and the TUI will show you the exact command syntax that it's using to get to those. Fabric scope, local scope, um, true scale lin lineage, etc. Uh, highlighting that CSV outputs are available from a lot of these commands too. So for example, if you want to see, uh, you know, I want to know what are the lids of the switches in the fabric or something like that, you, you literally ask, you know, give me, give me information that can extract the lids for all the fabric types that are switches in the fabric and, and here's their GUIDs and here's their, their text names and, and here's the, the, the lids and whether they were managed or not is uh, included in there. there. There's full text versions, but if you want it in CSV format, you can get this sort of stuff too. Uh, here's a simple, just give me the fabric info. Uh, this is an SA query of the fabric as a whole. So here's a basic, there's those nine switches again, the hundred and something HFIs in there, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Well, pretty straightforward. Um, there are a lot of query options. If you're going to do queries of fabric databases, there, they already have a, a filtering mechanism in, so there's a bunch of command line options there that you can check. The other thing that you might want to query into is the performance manager. And so there's PA queries. Uh, it was mentioned it would be nice to have some sort of uh, bin things, you know, show me the buckets of, of nodes that are having uh, integrity problems or congestion problems or, or are, are having security issues, et cetera, by uh, percentage bins. And you can look at these things further by either the virtual fabrics uh, that you've defined, in this case it's pretty simple, or by a group list. So I think the example here is uh, for the virtual fabric that's called default. You know, give me the, the virtual fabric information uh, uh, for, for the query here. 
Uh, local scope is, you know, for those people who like to work under the hood, is uh, definitely where the action is. Uh, we started a couple minutes late, so I'm just going to run a, f a few moments long here. Um, here's the OPA info, which should, should look kind of familiar. Information will give you information about the particular interface, the, the number of lanes that are active in the speeds. Uh, it'll give you a quick summary of the cable that's plugged in there and uh, so, some basic information about what's there. Of course, you can get a lot more detailed if you wanted by uh, going in there and doing queries uh, directly. In this case, this is a subnet management agent query. Uh, pulling out uh, things like this and there's a dash G option should you want the more easy to parse uh, format um, this is this is just I mean, you can extend on this if you wanted to uh, here's the performance manager uh, again the basic performance for transmit for receive uh, multicast unicast etc um, the extra innovation here uh, is that we also offer the ability to get the counts on a per virtual lane basis. So you can see what was happening on those different traffic classes on particular interfaces at the nodes as well as the switches. Um, all of those things would be summarized here, but you, can, you also can pull them out on the per virtual lane basis. And we'll wrap it up with a couple of, uh, of uh, quick examples here. Um, the the full feature fabric diag tools, OPA report, OPA top, uh, they end up being your best friends. Um, everything from verifying switches and links to uh, checking for loops uh, where they don't belong in your to fabric topologies to uh, the path usages and the routes uh, and more are available through this, uh, this full featured uh, uh, OPA report uh, capability here. How would you use OPA reports? Well, here's one where we're asking to verify uh, in the switches in a saved topology file what, what was happening for something that was uh, misconfigured. So in this case, uh, a normal system wouldn't show you any errors, but if there was a misconfiguration in the, in the system, it shows you right what it is, it points you at it, this is, uh, this is, these are the two nodes involved and the port numbers on them, and, and this is what was supposed to be there. <coughs> Opal report errors at a glance can give you a summary of what's going on against any of these uh, configured error thresholds that you were looking at. Um, they're all configurable. In this, in this case, we had, what, 2,300 links checked. Uh, nothing, nothing bad's going on. Uh, but if you want to dig further with OPA top, there's options down here to look at the bandwidth summaries, the error summaries, and configuration summaries, and a quick little color code. I know it's just a TUI, but the green, you know, green is good, yellow, red, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and binned by these different percentages of the thresholds that you would have looked at. There's a lot here. And just by touching the keys, for example, if you touch the E to go into the error summary, you might see something like this. And uh, within the error summary, you'd be like, why is there some percentage of uh, links or whatever that have uh, some integrity thing? You know, I would like to drill into that deeper. So that's what you do. You go in there and you find, ah, look at it. It's the link between here and here that is uh, showing particular integrity errors, so you can investigate it further. So in conclusion, um, we have published the source code. We have extensive online documentation from the Download Center um, for both the BASIC and the IFS, uh, which added those extra tools that I was uh, referring to right there. And then in general, since uh, OmniPath is um, kind of a new concept and there's a lot of you know misinformation and things out there, I would strongly recommend that you take some time to look at the Intel site uh, in the area of high performance computing and the OmniPath architecture to try and clarify some of those misunderstandings yourself as required. Thank you.